Hi, my name is Brendan Wine. I'm the Sarah Corden and Access Manager. Uh, this afternoon we'll be taking you through the CBD Red Zone for a little look around to see what it's like these days. Behind me you'll notice the, uh, the Forsyth Bar building, a uh, pretty big building in town which has got a lot of repair work going on to it currently. Lots of guys uh, working in and now, you'll hear some noise from the activity in there. And um, those guys have been flat out working in there for a number of months. Uh, just out a shot here to the left is the National Bank and uh, Victoria Square, an area which had a significant amount of lateral spread around the river. So that part has been um, quite badly damaged, but the City Council and the geotech engineers have been in there to take a wee look and um, figure out what's going on. Over my left shoulder there, you'll see the um, PwC building, and there's a number of contractors in there doing the strip out now. They're taking all the material um, out of the building before they get the, uh, the cranes in there. Start cutting and craning is a demolition method they'll do until it's down at a point where they can get a high reach um, machine in there and begin to nibble away at that building and put it on the ground. I've got a number of months to go there to do that job safely. Um, some other buildings like the one you see behind me here, the old Copthorn Hotel, its future is uncertain. Uh, we're not quite sure what the owners of the insurers intend doing there yet. We're working with them. Um, there isn't any great urgency with that currently, so when they make their decision, which is a big one, they'll let us know. We're about to go past where the Oxford on Avon used to be, a lovely old pub. Unfortunately, it didn't react very well during the earthquake and it's been demolished. Heritage people spent a lot of time there excavating the foundations of that site. They've pulled out a whole lot of uh, interesting archaeological material, which they will uh, deal with an archive in the future, I'm sure. We're about to go across the Colombo Street Bridge. It's now down to one lane. There are some concerns, engineering concerns around pedestrian access across it. And um, we can get across here on a truck, no problem, but sending pedestrians across isn't a great idea at the moment. And we're working closely with the City Council and Skirt on how we're going to deal with all the bridges throughout the city, including the ones that are still inside the CBD Red Zone. I had a shot now on uh, my right hand side is the uh, Town Hall, the Convention Centre. We'll head around there in a second, but you'll see behind me a number of clear sites for buildings that were damaged in the quake and they were either dangerous and got pulled down or were uneconomical to repair and the owners um, asked that we pull them down. And one of the real advantages of having a cordon around the city is it enables this activity to take place without the public being too close to it. So we can uh, get contractors and subcontractors in here, we can park them up and they can go about their business without all the extra health and safety concerns that come from having the general public uh, nearby. This speeds up the rebuild and uh, enables it to be done uh, safely and cheaply as well. Cheaper as well. Uh, you'll notice as we go through here now behind me is where the old convention centre used to be. Um, that's obviously been taken down. And uh, out of shot there over on my right hand side is the Christchurch Town Hall. Again, future is a little uncertain and we're working with the uh, Christchurch City Council on what we do there. Further up over my right hand, uh, right shoulder there is uh, where the Crown Plaza used to be, uh, that's been demolished and uh, it's now a large uh, debris pile and they're still taking the foundations out. So quite a significant amount of engineering work to go there before that area can be opened back up. In the, in the background you'll notice the, uh, the Government Life Building, that future of that building is a little uncertain and we'll probably come back to that in a few minutes. And uh, behind me too the Cathedral which um, as you can expect we'll get a little bit more discussion in this video. Out of shot is the old press building and that was a uh, site where unfortunately um, a person perished during the quake. It's now a, a work site and the new press building is in behind it. And they're in the building and operating quite happily. The Novotel building also just had a shot is underway. It's a big Hawkins site and they're going about their business. Cathedral Junction just behind that also uh, some repair work to be done in there. The Millennium and the Heritage uh, Hotels behind me right now. Um, a wee bit of work to go in there but uh, they were earthquake strengthened a number of, year ago, number of years ago and it's put them in really good stead to uh, open up once we can get the rest of the city underway. Uh, further out to the east of the city is uh, Radio Network House and a number of people will know by now that's going to be imploded on August the 5th and we're expecting a lot of people to come along and have a look at that. Uh, people often ask why we aren't imploding more buildings in the city and the answer is pretty simple. There's a huge liability issue that comes with it. Any damage that would be created uh, from imploding a building 
needs to be covered off by the contractor and the owner, and a lot of them are unwilling to accept that, uh, those millions of dollars of extra liability. So the Radio Network House, where it is, is a really good candidate for that. Just uh, out of shot here also is the BNZ. Uh, that's been now cut down to uh, four storeys, and they'll get the high reach in there shortly and start taking that building apart. And on that site's a number of our international visitors, particularly a load of Irish guys who have been uh, great to come to the city and help us out. So um, when the Irish team visited here uh, during the test series, a number of those guys got a chance to catch up with uh, the Irish rugby team as well. Didn't help them much. Uh, just down Hereford Street here, you'll notice a number of, couple of other buildings too where have disappeared. And in the background there is the Restart Mall car park. And we're working flat out with those guys to get enough car parks in the city so they can get the people into those uh, retail shops and really keep the economy of Christchurch moving. Now behind me a number of other buildings, uh, some of the old fast food outlets didn't uh, survive that well uh, after the quake but most of those, well, those buildings will get repaired, they've been cleared out and uh, they should be up and running shortly. Um, over on my right hand side here the Triangle Centre has been demolished and we're now into the foundations and we'll be taking those out over the course of the next uh, month or so. This will clear this area up quite nicely and there's a plan uh, that we all hope will come to fruition that we can move the restart wall which is on Cashel Street behind me. Hopefully that can move into this area here in the future and we can get some of those neat containers um, in there and start trading in there in the retail space. One of the Christchurch icons, Valentine's, uh, over my left shoulder there. Those guys are up and running. They've done a fantastic job of getting underway after the quake. We worked uh, really closely with them too to get that building um, and its staff back in there and operating. They've got a large staff of people and they've been in Christchurch a long time. Uh, and they did a really good job of getting in um, and operating as quickly as they could and getting their people back to work. It was great. Uh, further down the road, there's a number of other guys who are doing some activities within Ballantines and the adjacent buildings. They've got some 40-foot containers there to load their gear into. Uh, one of the benefits, again, of having the cordon is it enables us to do things like that. If we're operating under um, a normal regime, that would be difficult um, to do, difficult to get consent to do, but one of the uh, benefits of the serial legislation is we're able to do things like that and get the recovery up and running quickly. We're now on Litchfield Street and uh, we're by the old uh, bus exchange there. The facade's been taken off that because it was um, falling off and by taking it down, um, it was a nice old facade but it was dangerous, it was gonna fall down and hurt people so it had to come off, that's been done. Some of the cars and trucks behind us are parked in a position there um, where there was a number of buildings and in the background the old council civic building and the future of that building is undecided also. Uh, one of the benefits of being inside the cordon here, you'll notice, is all those trucks can be in there and park and not be in anyone's way, not taking up um, car parks or space in the road. And that really enables those guys to be efficient with their truck movements and quite effective in the way they manage their sites. The majority of people we have working in here at the moment, the owners and the contractors, uh, really appreciate the cordon and understand why it's here. And it makes a significant difference to the speed and the cost of what they're doing. So uh, the cordon's here for a wee while yet, we think. Sort of coming down now to uh, Litchfield and High Street, and uh, this really was quite a badly affected part um, immediately after the quake. It's much different now. You'll notice over the course of the last uh, couple of minutes that there's very few buildings in the city now that look dangerous, and that's good. Um, most of the earthquake damage, um, the bad earthquake damage, has been taken care of. And a lot of the buildings now are just in a, a normal rebuild and construction phase, although there are a couple of demolitions going on, of course. So this area has been treated as a large uh, work site. It's about 50 hectares, making it one of the largest work sites in the country. But we have lots of machinery and men and equipment and activities going on in here that would be inappropriate for the public to be a part of. So uh, we keep the fence up while we can speed up the recovery. On my right hand side there, you'll see the old Excelsior Hotel. Uh, the facade's been saved, that's fantastic. Uh, the container's been put in front of it to provide it with some support in case there's any more seismic events. And the owner's away busily trying to figure out what to do with the rest of that space. Further down High Street and, and beyond there past the Ellison Video Land, there's a number of buildings there which are back up and operating. Ellison Video Land in particular has been great. The owner there, Paul, 
has been in contact with us right from the get-go. Um, he got back in early, got his building up and running. He's now operating a fully fledged business out of there, and the C1 coffee shop will be in there shortly too. And um, good luck to those guys, they've done a great job in getting up and running. The IRD building uh, out of shot now, but over there, the future of that building is a little uncertain. It behaved really well in the earthquake. Uh, the hundreds of people that worked in there got out, so we consider that to be a really good building. Um, getting people back into work has been a slightly different proposition. The owners group are, are working on that, uh, but we hope to hear from them uh, in the very near future what they intend doing. So just heading down into uh, one of the parts of the city that was a little more obscure and out of the way. There's a couple of neat bars down here, which are obviously no longer operating on uh, Poplar Lane. And you'll see over my left shoulder an example of the unreinforced masonry buildings, the brick ones which uh, didn't behave particularly well in the earthquake. Some of the infrastructure left behind by Orion, a lot of earthquake strengthening um, has gone into those and most of the infrastructure actually behaved really well so they were able to keep the power going to the, uh, the city and uh, I think most people recognise that Orion did a really good job during the earthquake. Uh, the Institute of Technology building's up and running also. There's people out there you can see on the other side of the fence going about their business, probably having lunch, which is good to see. And we're really starting to see signs of life around the CBD with getting the economy up and running. We do have a few issues um, though, and to be fair, and one of them is behind us, the Mackenzie Willis facade has a, um, has a retaining structure against us, which is um, not certified just yet to have the public um, going around and underneath it, and until that happens, uh, we can't let people go through this particular part of Chewham Street. Uh, the Majestic Theatre there, not looking terribly flash at the moment, uh, but not really an indication of what's going on structurally, just a few broken windows. The future of that building is again with the owners, and uh, sometimes it takes a wee while to make a decision. So uh, while they're doing that, uh, we'll just leave the fence up. Up here on my right hand side in front of the vehicle is the, uh, the, West, the old Westpac building. Big old concrete structure. Uh, the owners have deemed it's uh, time for that. The lifespan of that building has uh, come to its end and uh, that building is being deconstructed and being such a big concrete structure will end up with a lot of debris. And what happens is uh, the debris all gets uh, craned off the building. Generally it will get crushed uh, nearby and then trucked out of the city to uh, one of the number of the sites. Um, outside the city where it can be dumped or reused and recycled in many circumstances. So a building of that size will generate um, hundreds of tonnes of debris and it all has to go somewhere. So um, normally it will be taken away on large trucks and the large trucks will uh, drive around in here and uh, another reason which makes this place a really big work site and that added danger element of having mach heavy machinery around is another reason that we exclude the public for the time being. It certainly won't last forever and it's not our intention to keep the public out for any longer than we need to but if we can do this rebuild um, safely and quickly and save people money that's what we'll do. So the Holiday Inn uh, coming up on our uh, right hand side in Westbrook also. There you go right thanks Jersey. And those builders are, sorry, those buildings are still with the owners and their insurers and their reassurers uh, to make decisions on what they're going to do with those. It sounds like it's taken a wee while for a number of those buildings and owners to make those decisions, and it has. Uh, but some of those build, some of those decisions are incredibly complex. Uh, we've done what we can to assist those people with making those decisions, but with um, some really interesting ownership models, some really um, long-term financial implications. These people have, uh, rightly so, taken a long time to make their decisions. They need to get it right. Uh, coming up on the right-hand side, it was a part of the city where there was a number of bars. Um, some of them survived really well, and they'll probably reopen in the near future. Some of them, like on my right-hand side here, have not survived uh, particularly well at all, and they've been taken down. And one of the big contractors in the city, Nikau, are in there doing some of that work right now. And those guys are an example of a New Zealand company that have come to Christchurch. They weren't here in any great capacity beforehand. But they've come to Christchurch to help out and they've been a uh, welcome part of the rebuild. 
just want to take the opportunity now to talk about some of the other activities that go inside the red zone. A uh, number of people come in here and visit, and we've hosted in excess of 300 visits for different groups over the course of the last 18 months. And a part of the reason we set up the Red Zone bus tours is because those visits become quite consuming. We've had some VIPs in here uh, who help raise the profile and fundraise for the recovery effort. We've had a number of investors come through here, um, some high profile uh, royalty and uh, government officials and particularly the internationals who have been in the city and had a good look and gone back to where they come from and spoken to their people, uh, their investors, their tourist market, their staff, their government employees about what's going on here and really spread the message that Christchurch is on the road to recovery. We're just going past some of these buildings now, we've finally got a decision um, on a number of these buildings. It's been a sort of complicated process when buildings um, share party walls, we call, and to get two owners to agree to a particular method of uh, demolition or the treatment for a building can sometimes be quite complex. A number of these buildings um, nearby have uh, been through that now and we're taking care of them. That's Radio Network House there. That will be imploded on uh, August the 5th. Discuss that really briefly early on. There'll be an exclusion zone put around it, but a lot of people in the city will get a chance to see that when uh, someone pushes the button. So those guys there on the other side of the fence are uh, outside the red zone, going about business as usual. And in fact, you can even see there's a chap at his desk up there beavering away. Lots of people uh, visit the city every day and walk around the fence to have a look at what's going on. And we really encourage that. Uh, there's nothing to hide in here other than it uh, can be a dangerous place. So we want people to come and have a look at it, uh, but also respect the fact that the fence is up to keep our guys safe and um, other people safe. But no problem with anyone uh, jumping on the Red Zone bus tours or coming up to the fence and having a look in and asking our guys questions. So we're nearly back to the cathedral now and we can talk about that until the cows come home, I guess. But what I'll probably do there is just sort of show you what we can see and um, let you make your own, own mind up on on your opinions. We're in Cathedral Square now and uh, you'll see a number of activities going on here. Um, right behind me is the project management office and in there we've got the archaeologists, the uh, Department of Labour representatives, some of our staff and a number of other people use that area as meeting offices as well for some of the, uh, the deals that get stitched together um, between contractors and owners and, and our guys. Uh, Christchurch Cathedral, uh, everyone will have their own opinion on what should go on there. The engineering advice that Sarah has received is uh, pretty clear and um, we'll wait to see what happens with that but as most people understand that's an Anglican church owned building and they're uh, working really closely with their contractors to figure out the, uh, the right way to make whatever the final decision is. Um, if we just pan the camera around here, you'll see that the old Grant Thornton building um, has been knocked down as we speak. That's a, what a dirty demolition looks like. That building was um, not in a state where we could put people into it to carry out a normal demolition, so they knock it down with the stuff still in it. Vic from Valley Busters and the rest of the crew, a real highlight of the um, central city and the CBD. Those guys have been feeding our contractors um, for months now and we really appreciate the effort those guys put in too. Thanks very much for uh, joining me this afternoon for a look around the CBD Red Zone. Uh, it's a really interesting place. Uh, it's, it's a big area that we, we're looking after and we're really conscious of the hazards uh, that are in here. All these guys that you'll see in the background of these shots um, have been through a really intense induction process and are really aware of these hazards. And uh, we're really conscious that um, people want to get back into the city. We understand that and, and, and agree. Uh, but we also have to make sure that the guys that are working in here and the work that they're doing um, is done in a safe manner and we want to make sure that the, um, we don't get in a situation where we have to deal with um, public and traffic when we don't need to. So for the time being uh, the fence is going to stay up and uh, we'll get this work done nice and quickly so we can get the people back into the city in a uh, safe and a controlled manner. That's really our goal. So thanks very much for joining me. I hope you uh, understand what we're trying to achieve and uh, we'll do another one of these again in the future.